This is the Bulls E-Stream Evo FS3, full suspension electric bike. And one of the things that I really love about the way that it's set up is the battery is removable, but it's built into that down tube. So it really disappears like from the side and even the, the motor is, is relatively small. Um, it's 250 watt nominal rating, but I think it's like 530 peak. Uh, really awesome power delivery, very like fluid. It uses cadence and torque sensing. So one of the things I've noticed riding it is that if I'm pushing just gently, uh, almost like inconsistently, it kind of goes rear, like it responds to my actual pedal um, input versus, you know, cadence sensors and things where it's more like on or off. So this is a great bike to ride, you know, when you're on terrain that's, you know, a little bit more advanced because you want that response. You want to be able to apply power exactly when you need it and then to have the system back off when you back off. Um, this is a class one electric bike, goes up to 20 miles per hour, pedal assist only. It doesn't have brake lever motor inhibitors because you really don't need them. It's so responsive. And a lot of the electric mountain bikes these days are foregoing um, motor inhibitors because because of that, because it's torque sensing. So it's just a really advanced system and one that's simple to use. You know, if you look at the controller up here, this is the display and it uses this transflective sort of um, really interesting I don't know exactly how the technology works, but very visible and yet um, n not so large and doesn't require like this, uh, you know, LCD screen that could get damaged if you crash and, and takes up more of your bars and just makes it look like an electric bike. This is really kind of stealthy in my opinion and simple. So you've just got three levels of assist and you can kind of hear this tactile click when I arrow down, you can turn it all the way off or go, you know, one, two, three, for increasing increasingly power output. Um, so I, I love that. And then you've got your speed in like miles per hour set up right now and a little battery indicator with five dots. So it's kind of like all the most important things. No, there's no odometer in there or trip distance or max speed or any of that stuff. But do you really care for something like this? I, maybe not. I mean, you're out there hopefully enjoying a nice trail ride and doing it quietly. So that's the other thing about this motor. It does produce some noise at higher RPM, but it's sort of a lower noise than say the Bosch system, which is sort of a higher wee. And that, that system, again, that's kind of what I was comparing to earlier. It's, it's more of a boost, like you feel it. You're on an electric bike and it's there for you. This one, it's more like it's working with you. It's more fluid. Um, so I kind of like that, you know, they, they each have their place. I enjoy them both, but I always notice I was just testing a Bosch bike a minute ago and I got off onto this and I was like, where is it? Where, you know, and uh, you know, I took it up a steep hill and it was like, oh, it's there, it's helping you. But it's definitely more to that like torque sensing um, and just sort of a smoother, uh, more of a minimalist approach. Um, to it and, and I don't mind that. The battery pack is really a, a superstar here. It's 37 volts, 17.5 amp hours. So if you want a bike that's gonna go the distance, that's still sort of an off-road mountain style versus a commuter, this would be a really good choice. They say like in ideal conditions with like a 170 pound rider, flat pavement, no wind, whatever, you know, you're getting amazing range. 137 miles per charge is what they estimate. I put on the website, you know, maybe like 35 to 40 at the low end if you're a heavier rider and you're really going up mountains in the highest level of assist. It all depends. But it's it's nice to have those extra um, watt hours, of course. And because this is a mid-drive, you're leveraging the gears. And this bike has more gears. There's 22 in total. So we've got a couple of um, chain rings up front, 38 tooth and a 28 tooth. And then in the back, um, we've got another Dior XT derailleur. And I believe it's 11 to just measured this 40. Yeah. So a really good range. In fact, the Bosch bikes, they just have a single sprocket up front, not two, and it's 1140. And that, I still think that's pretty good. So I'm that kind of person. I don't shift a whole lot up front, but if you really need to climb and you're on steep terrain, you can do it. This bike comes in three different sizes, which is excellent just for providing a better fit and a good feel. I weighed this one and it's like, you know, 51.8 pounds. This is the size 49. And I've got all the specs back at the website about the other, the other sizes and some more details. Before I was talking just about, you know, how this bike might be used, 
It's got longer travel suspension, 150 millimeter. We've got the RockShox Yari up front and the Monarch RT in the rear with some adjustability like rebound adjust, um, air fork, again, relatively lightweight. And then the other cool thing about this bike, in addition to having, you know, quick release 15 millimeter through axle up front and quick re release 12 millimeter axle in the rear for stiffness and just makes it easier to take the wheels off, put them back on, align those disc brakes. This is actually using Boost, which is something that Trek introduced, I don't know, it was like 2010 or something. Um, but that technology is just, hey, what if we have like a longer hub? They, they say wider, but it's longer. Uh, they add 10 millimeters up front and six millimeters uh, in the back. And that gives you a little bit better alignment of the chain, uh, which is just, it's not gonna stress the chain as much. This is nice, especially considering that we've got two chain rings. And it's going to give you kind of like um, a wider mount for your spokes. Yeah, and I think we've got 13 gauge in the rear, 14 gauge up front. So a little bit thicker spokes too. So you get just a wider, uh, kind of a stiffer, tougher build overall with those through axles probably become increasingly necessary as you make a wider or longer hub. Uh, so it's, it's just neat. It's, that's one of the highlights of this particular bike. Only comes in this one color scheme, sort of this matte black with a glossy gray and the neon like emergency alert yellow. Um, tires are pretty awesome. Schwabi Rocket Run. Got the Evo Evolution light skin. I think they're tubeless ready and it's a 27.5. So, you, you know, you're kind of like between the 26 of yesteryear and 29ers for trail riding and stuff. And I would call this more of an enduro bike. Um, it's definitely the kind that you can take downhill with the longer travel suspension. Again, it's 27.5 by 2.25 so not super fat a little bit more nimble for navigating rocks and stuff and just going to be quicker um, i like this size personally it's it kind of fits me I'm, I'm about 5'9 and i just like that the frame is reinforced for me you know the battery was a big highlight this one it was kind of a 2016 model you do have to power on the battery before you can activate the display it's two steps i think some of the newer bulls bikes it's only one step you just straight to the controller and up here and you're good. The other thing about it is you have to put the key in to remove the battery pack um, and it's right there where the crank arm is. So if you forget and you leave the key in and you start pedaling, you're going to break that and then it takes a while, maybe a couple weeks to get that fulfilled through ABUS. So don't do that. Just be careful. No one wants to ride with their keys in the bike anyway, especially if you're going off road and they're jingling and stuff. And in this case, it could be really detrimental to your system. You can charge the battery on or off the bike, which is great. And it uses the energy bus standard. So it's kind of the magnetic, um, you know, data plus energy being sent back and forth. Higher end specialized turbos use that. Um, so do some of the, the other premium bikes. It's nice because if you like trip over the cable, it just comes unhooked. It doesn't like tip your bike unless the bike's really precariously um, propped. Tapered head tube, one and one eighth. Uh, really low rise, kind of more more aggressive bar, but not a super long stem. Again, got the specs on the website. Uh, locking ergon grips, Shimano Dior XT hydraulic brakes. Got the 180 millimeter discs front and rear just good stuff like what you need to get out there on the trail one complaint that i had with a lot of the uh, bros powered um, bulls bikes is that they don't have a slap guard here they do have like a little plastic sticker slap guard um, and it doesn't look too banged up you know this is a demo bike you can see the pedals I, i'm not a huge fan of these cage pedals and this one's really getting banged up someone was taking it on, a, on some hard hard terrain and maybe laid it down um, those are some areas that you might you might want to add a lizard skin neoprene thing or add a you know better set of pedals or some clipless pedals or something. And then I love that there's actually room to mount a bottle cage right here. And I, don't, I haven't messed with it too much. I've seen cages on some of the other bikes, so I think it's possible. But it's almost like you could put it in different places. Or I I'm not really sure, but that's cool. That's a really nice little upgrade. You get thirsty out there. And this is the bike that just looks like a bicycle. I mean, you, you see someone riding this, maybe you're not going to hear it. Part of the reason it's quieter is because there's like, like a belt within the motor. So it's not just gears next to each other. There's some sort of like slack in that system and a little bit of like 
um, maybe it, it reduces the reverberation and stuff. So I, I like that. I'm gonna go ahead and hop on this thing, try to ride and talk for a minute, um, explain some of what I was talking about before with an example. I'll just click this up a little bit. All the way up to the highest level so you can hear it. Okay, here we go, I'm pedaling softly. You know, it was cutting in and out there because I was applying more or less pressure. And what I was trying to demonstrate is that it's fluid. It's not just all on, all off. I'm not gonna get bucked off unless I purposely push really hard. Um, so it's much more intuitive. It feels more like a bicycle in that sense. And I really like that. things that the bull system doesn't have is shift sensing. So you might have heard a little bit more mashing. It comes back to just being conscious of how you ride. You can mash your gears if you have a motor or not, but having the extra force of a motor with high torque, you know, you're, you're adding strain potentially to the chain and to those sprockets. I'm going to coast downhill for a bit and check that suspension and then power back up. Nice to have that extra front sprocket, um, just being able to shift to that for climbing. So I'm gonna check that out this time. Not having a problem right now, but I'm just gonna shift down. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm like, lifting that front wheel off the ground. They've got so much torque going on from the motor. There we go. It's almost like I don't need those really low gears. Of course, you can hear the motor a little bit more at those those higher RPMs, but that's kind of the case with most electric bikes, at least today, unless it's like a gearless hub motor and then it's really heavy and you got that unsprung weight. This one's really well balanced. It just keeps all the, the extra weight of the battery in the motor low, right where you'd want it. And you get the comfort of the suspension 
So it's definitely one of my favorites. Like this is a this is a winning bike for sure. Price seems pretty decent. Um, again, it's like that uh, forty six ninety nine. So we're getting up close to close to that like five k mark, but for a really good drive system. <laughs> Responding to my pedal strokes. Until we hit that 20 mile per hour and it just cuts out. For the full write up on this with more details and comments and pictures and stuff, I'll see you back at electricbikereview.com. And of course, ride safe, be respectful. This is a class one electric bike, so it's the kind that you can take on more and more trails, especially in California where I'm shooting right now. And uh, it's nice, you know, people may not even know it's electric and you can enjoy yourself and go further and um, just, you know, explore terrain like this. It's, it's really steep.